Hey Brick Maniacs, it is Lando here at the designer's desk of Dan Siskind with his all new model. This is the T-64A main battle tank, correct? That is correct. Right on. Uh, let's, let's get right into it, Dan. Um, yeah. Well, let's talk about the T-64. I mean, this is actually kind of a, a not so well known tank. Um, and one of the reasons it's not so well known is because it was super secret yeah. and it continued to be secret pretty much throughout the Cold War. So, you know, it, the, the Americans have the Abrams tank. Um, everybody thinks, oh, the T-72 is the Russian equivalent. Actually, it wasn't. The T-64 was the, the highest uh, developed Soviet tank, and, and even though it's close to the T-62 in the numbering system, it's actually a completely different tank. Interesting. So this is uh, um, basically at, at, in the 1970s when this was developed. It was actually started in the early 1960s, but uh, it really didn't go into production until the early 1970s. Um, that was totally state of the art. They built, they developed this great, this really powerful but really complicated uh, flat diesel engine for it. It's like a, it's like a V12. Yeah. That it's actually almost completely. This is a pretty low profile tank. Here. Super small. Uh, this was the Soviet tanks. They didn't go for these gigantic monster tanks. Uh, they were like thinking slow. Let's make lots of them. Um, mass production kind of thing. The right. T, basically the T34 concept moved forward. Um, but this one being completely different, it was really super innovative. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, um, I'm not sorry, I'm fighting. <laughs> they're not even. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. All right, OCD here. <laughs> yeah, stop, stop <laughs> playing with my tank. <laughs> um, they, they, they take a few dents and they run into things. Yes. Um, you know, it's it's just, that's just the way the tanks are. <laughs> um, so basically, the, 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 real, the real advanced features of this tank was an autoloader. Mm -hmm. There is a a three-man turret, you have a small turret, there's an autoloader, which is, which ha basically brings the entire fighting compartment with uh, ammunition. It's, on a, it's a circular carousel, and the autoloader can basically, um, takes the place of, of the fourth guy, the third guy in the turret. Um, there's no human loader in there. Autoloader can, can ram five shells in a row of the same type into this thing super fast. So, um, you know, it typically in tank combat, first shot, first kill is really important. Right. But when you've got, like, basically a tank machine gun, um, that first shot, first kill is still important, but you, if you miss, you got four more shot right. shells of the same type coming right after it. So uh, that was really innovative, hugely innovative. For one, it saved personnel. Uh, two, it saved time uh, in the field. Uh, it did, of course, come with its drawbacks. Um, you have one less guy in the tank, right. which means when it comes to maintenance, got maintenance work, everybody has to do 25% more work. Um, also, if the auto loader breaks, you have to, you can manually load it. You know, so somebody, either the gunner or the, the commander, has to like ram the shell, and you have to kind of work around the this big uh, autoloader mechanism. So, um, sound like kind of like a nightmare, but uh, that's just it could be done if you needed. To. Yeah, yeah, in an emergency. So, right. I mean, if you if, if you were like facing down a line of T sixty four or uh, M M sixty uh, tanks, or even you know Abrams or something like that, you'd be pretty highly motivated to get that shell in there pretty quick. Right. <laughs> That's so after you fired five, you're saying in a row successfully. Well, no, that if that's no, it'll automatically re, re, reset the. Uh, oh, auto even load. that, yeah. But if you were in like fast fire mode, it has to fire five of the same shells okay. because it has to. Be, the carousel has to be in the same position. Um, the you can you can fire more than five shells at a time, um, but that's if you're like trying to get your fastest mode to you know combat modes five of the same same type of I shells. See. Uh oh. <laughs> We have button for silence. <laughs> Shh, I'm filming. <laughs> so, um, if you want, we can go over the. the Let's do it. Yeah. This, this this thing, um, as you were you were kind of playing with before, it does have this gill armor. You see these armor panels, uh, the same sort of uh, uh, concept of the uh, Soviet or not Soviet, the World War II German tanks with these skirts on. Yep. The gill armor basically serves as as additional spaced armor on the frontal arc of the tank. Right. You want to have if you're if you're in a tank, this right here is your strongest piece of armor. Mm -hmm. uh, they're followed by your turret, your mail, and all this stuff. Um, but they call this the frontal arc, and you have you want to be def be able to deflect shells coming right. from the front. And if you have a spaced armor, as so, you can actually add these, pop these things out. I'm not sure if they could do it from inside the tank or if they had to get out and actually do it. I'm going to guess it's the latter, but you could. Uh, um, yeah, because it's what's interesting. You, I mean, you look at this from the side, and it's like, man, you have all these these gaps in your armor, but. I mean, well, chances are, if you're if you're maneuvering your tank correctly, you shouldn't have you shouldn't ever get that exposed. Well, if you, if you're mostly concerned like this 30 degree cone, yeah. that pretty much you can see that this gill armor actually does a pretty good spacing, and you would have multiple plates yeah. if for for most. Uh, would they go straight out like that, or was it? Yeah, they they yeah. just definitely be straight out. Uh, it gives you the best best coverage. I Basically, see. if you look at it, you're not seeing 
the back half of the tank. So this doesn't even need to be protected. Right. So it actually, in a way, it saves weight. So you don't have to have the whole the whole uh, track right. co track uh, covered. Um, your weakest part of your tank is actually not the tracks, but it's 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 the space between the road wheels and the tracks. And if you notice, this tank doesn't have the giant road wheels like, say, the T55, right. which actually serve as spaced armor. So you have these gaps, and that's the reason they put these skirts down. Um, later models of this, they actually got rid of the gill armor, probably because it was complex and they wanted to simplify it. Um, but it would be like a, an armored cover, and they still actually make this tank in, to, to this day. Interesting. Yeah. Any notable uh, conflicts this thing's been a part of? Well, it was designed to be the main frontline tank of the Soviet Union. So if, if say, conflict did break out in, say, Flashpoint like Berlin, right. or um, the, say we wanted to ram 30 Soviet divisions across the Fulda Gap and into the soft underbelly of Europe, you would, this would be the leading the way. Right. Um, so that's what it was designed for. Super secret, not even actually revealed to the public until 1985. Wow. Um, again, there's, it's, it's so hard, I mean, because of that, it's been so hard for me to actually find research pictures of the old, this is a T-64A as it was in like the early 1970s through the early 1980s with these, these spaced armor. Um, they did have other versions come out, but the biggest revelation is that came after the fall of the Soviet Union, or the breakup, I should say the fall, the breakup of the Soviet Union, 1989. Um, the plant that made these was located in the Ukraine, and guess who got the plant after the breakup? The Ukraine continued to make these, and they still continue to this day make the T-64. So there's, there's even more modern versions of this? Oh, absolutely. Uh, they have, uh, this is T-64A, state-of-the-art circa late 70s, early 80s. They came up with an MA model, a B1, a BA. It the, the continues going. They're all just different variations, um, improve, you know, improvements. Right. So there's one. This doesn't have any reactive armor. There's uh, the newer versions will have reactive armor all over it. Uh, I mean, these are fighting in the in the in conflicts in the uh, eastern Ukraine today right. uh, against, which is you know, interesting, and fighting against the uh, T72, which is actually the, the Russians, the Soviet Union's cheaper replacement tank for this. So everybody knows a T72, and if it, it basically the T72 is just a dumbed-down, cheaper version of this thing. So well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and you know the famous T80 would be the, the descendant of this thing. T80 is this tank with a um, turbine engine, so a uh, jet turbine engine. So very similar to this tank, if exactly the same, except it had that turbine engine. Okay. In it. Um, so basically, even more complicated, more expensive. <laughs> you don't see any T80s basically to this day because it was so complicated, so expensive that they've decided, well, let's just get rid of them and go back to uh, the lesser technology, um, simpler technology. I guess sure. it's not lesser. If it works, don't knock it. Right. But the, they called the T80 the bullet tank because it was so fast with that turbine in it. But uh, this is just fine. You know, right. I don't Especially think, in quantity. You know. I don't see the Ukrainians charging across anybody's border anytime. Sure. So the need, the need for it is not there. Right. So. Um, you mentioned a snorkel on this? This does have a snorkel. Yeah. So features, let's go over, some, some, keep going over features. Yeah, let's keep going. Um, I'll pull this little snorkel. This funny looking tube on the back is actually a snorkel. So if you were like going fading, you know, why build a bridge when you can just swim across a river? So these tanks do have a snorkel feature. Um, and every tank has the snorkel tube stuck on the back. It's just it's just something that's been there. Uh, and sometimes you'll see extensions, but the, the T-64A that I was modeling only had the one snorkel piece. Um, and then for when they're not using it, it just stores in the oh back, yeah, yeah. back of the turret. Oh, yeah, it's always, you see, always just see them stuck right on the back of the That's interesting. Back of the turret. Um, I think there's another piece of the snorkel system that actually is a tube that goes down over the commander's hatch. So you can go in water. Yeah, and you can see that they have <laughs> extensions. You'll see these things like in water. So if they have to ford a river, yeah. it, it can go fairly fairly deep. It's a lot easier to actually bring your bridge with you by just driving <laughs> across the bottom of the river than to have to literally build a bridge. And we see that in some uh, even modern tanks today, um, those, those uh, snorkeling kits built into them. The, um, Korean tank. Oh, they all do. The all the Abrams. Yeah. They all have. They all sure, yeah, usually sure don't, unless they're, they're planning on going across water, they don't usually carry yeah. it with them. But the, the Soviet Union, being the Soviet Union, the, the idea was to have every tank come with everything you would need. They always have this unditching beam. So, you know, you have the state of the art, super like modern 1960s, yeah. late 60s, early 70s tank, and there's still a beam across the back, and that's yeah. just to help it. If you I mean, just like a literal like a wood. That's a telephone, telephone like, pole. Yeah. Telephone pole. They all have them. <laughs> they see the T72 has it too. It's great. Yeah. Um, this does have two open hatches on the roof. Um, you have the, obviously the commanders and one. We'll talk about the commander in a second. And then you actually have the loaders. Actually, it wouldn't be the loader. It'd be the gunner's hatch because there's no loader in this thing. Right. <laughs> so it does have two opening hatches. Um, you have an assortment of, you have the infrared spotlight. You have a regular spotlight on the roof. Which one's the infrared spotlight? 
There's one on right here. Okay. So they had this just gigantic in infrared illuminating night light night night vision spotlight yeah. on here. Uh, but of course, it's infrared. You, it, the, you could, to the naked eye, you can't yeah. see this light. But uh, for their night vision system at the time, that's what they used. Where would their night vision system be located? Um, they would have these there's periscopes and, sure. and they may have some sort of a apparatus that okay. wear to you. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not familiar with the Soviet. All Put the you Soviet on the spot here. Okay. Well, and it, and it also changed. It, it was adapted. Yeah. It changed throughout the years. So they, they do. You know. And it's for other like other people also. If you have a bunch of tanks lighting stuff up, you know. Yeah. Well, typically, if you're in a main battle tank, you're not. You're going to be out in the front by yourself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, you'll be leading a column of other tanks or in line with them. Um, sure. On the the actual tank, they have this NSVT machine gun, which is is like a 50 caliber machine gun, the Russian equivalent. And it would be remotely operated by the commander from inside popular. the turret. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, oops, oops, sorry about that. I, I couldn't <laughs> convince. <laughs> yeah, I, I could. I couldn't convince Will to. Uh, yeah, it does not go up or down. It's it's just my bad. Um, I couldn't convince Will to to give us an actual S or NSVT, uh, basically because you know this is only going to be like a one time build, and yeah. we wouldn't you know we wouldn't be able to sell a whole lot of them. So he 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 opted out of building us. So I, I substituted a Hotchkiss, which looks actually very similar. Um, you know, size and, 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 and shape. So if you want to brick build your own NSVT, go ahead and do it. There is a little, another little uh, scope under there. It's, it's another uh, searchlight. I think it's for the commander, uh, hmm. infrared searchlight. Um, but yeah, that's, a, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, it. It does have working suspension. So you can, you can see the, the wheels here do, do suspend. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I just buckled one up inside itself. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's get that fixed here. Make it look nice. So it does have working suspension. The tracks do run pretty pretty freely, although it's sitting on a book right now. That's not going to make it want to go. There we go. <laughs> um, stickers and printing on this. Um, there are turret numbers. Yeah. Um, stickers. Those are the only stickers that comes with. You see the turret number here. It's repeated over on these, these boxes on the side here. Everything else is printed, so you actually you get 17 yeah. printed elements. Wow. You have the little headlights, the headlights here. All of the armor panels and all the storage panels, which I basically lifted off of uh, Cody's T72, same, same, completely the same storage scheme, literally the same. I mean, it's it's virtually the same, the same uh, yeah, no arrangement. Shot of that. Yeah. So they would uh, just, what, what would they, what kind of things would they store in there? Uh, well, extra fuel, tools, sure. things like that. All, yeah. I mean, even their like rain gear and stuff would be. Okay. You know, the, the, it's it's cramped inside of these yeah. things. Um, the Soviet Soviet tank doctrine made basically said, we're going to make everything as small as possible, make the target as small and hit as t possible, biggest gun on there as possible. So they didn't really have a whole lot of room inside right. this. Not thing. the most comfortable interiors for those, I hear. No, no. <laughs> uh, it's not made for comfort. It's, sure. it's meant for business. Right. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, it comes with one figure. Uh, we, we've seen this guy before. This is our Soviet tanker, so um, a simple black jumpsuit. Um, right. I know you guys have been asking us to make these these figures. We will maybe make them someday. We're so our our, our printing department is yeah. just so overwhelmed with with products to print right now that making extras of these is just not not yes. on the table. Maybe we'll make a sticker pack or something. Though. Yeah, comes. I mean, we are. There is a sticker pack. I believe releasing the same week, if not the week after. It's probably World War Two, but World War Two. So a similar, very similar jumpsuit um, that they would be wearing, you know, all through the cold. It's a black jumpsuit, you know. Right. Um, so um, that same factory has been making that jumpsuit since 1938. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same. So a really simple, <laughs> just black utility jumpsuit. You know, you get oil on it. You know, he doesn't show up as well. So yeah. black jumpsuit. So if you want more guys to go with this, that sticker pack would work it's pretty a dashing well. Dashing black jumpsuit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Anything else you want to go over? No, that's it. This is cool. uh, this is this is the latest in our MBT series. Kind of, a, we're in this Cold War stage right now. So. This will be limited. It's it's not going to be a mass production kit that Brickman is doing. Of, um, if it sells out immediately, we maybe maybe do another batch. I'm not sure. Again, our production is overwhelmed with demand for our stuff that we just can't fulfill. So um, we do hand make all these kits. I would suggest if you want to get one, um, get it in the first batch. Get it yeah. get it soon because um, put pit this against all the other tanks that are sold out at the time. Um, I don't know if this is going to ever be able to make a comeback. Sure. Once How many did you, did you say you were planning on making of this? There are, I believe, 100 in the pipeline. Okay. Um, we've just learned that 50 of anything sure. is just not enough, um, especially for a main battle tank. Um, even an obscure one like this. Uh, I think it's kind of cool that it is an obscure one. We're yeah. making this tank. It was very difficult to do the research because it's mm -hmm. at the time when these things were active, it, this stuff was all right. top secret. And of course, we don't even live in the Soviet Union. And all that stuff, you just there's just no record right. of it. 
Um, I have books, but uh, the books are even. It's like the, I see the same five pictures all over the place. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's 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 just the information was. It's just not out there. Yeah. Well, wow. very interesting tank. Uh, that's some cool history behind that. Just in the the secrecy of it and. Um, you know the uh, the lineage from one armor to the next one. So yeah, yeah. So this is this is the the, the predecessor to the T seventy two. So everybody knows the T seventy two. This is the thing the T seventy two wishes it was. This is like the super super badass T seventy two. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, what a better way to describe this. That's awesome. Um, I think with that, that's the uh, that's a T sixty four A designed by Dan Siskind. Uh, very cool model. Um, this will go fast. So do not wait uh, for more information on it. Please check out BrickMania.com. Thanks for watching.